Good evening and praise the Lord. I am so excited to be back again uh, on Tough Love on Marriage and Bliss. My name is Kanjagwa. I'm so excited because I know that we are learning. I know that uh, we are receiving a lot of information that is helping us to sort our marriages and to help us out in uh, making sure that our marriages are getting back in order. Our main aim with everything that we are doing is restoring God's order in matters, marriage and relationships. And we are so excited that God has given us this opportunity to become a voice in this generation where we are talking about marriage and making sure that marriages are working. Uh, allow us to just make a prayer and then we begin. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you. We glorify your name and we honor you. Thank you for this opportunity to just speak your word. I pray that, Lord, may you open up uh, revelation after revelation that you may be of help and that this, whatever we are discussing this day, that it will be uh, a, a place where we will stand on, a place where we will be uh, excited to bring out what you have put in us. I Thank you, I glorify your name, and it is in Jesus' name that we do pray and even believe. Amen. So um, today, let me uh, allow me to start uh, with a with a with a statement that uh, I have been pondering upon, and and this statement is that the greatest challenge of marriage, the greatest challenge of marriage and relationships is that most of the times we remove the peck that is on our partner's eyes and we forget the log that is in ours. Most of the times we we are there to show our partners, our, our spouses on what they are doing wrong, what they are not doing correctly, what they need to change. But most of the times we don't take the opportunity and the chance to also look at ourselves and say, this is what I'm doing right, this is what I'm doing wrong, and, and I will really want to change and become a better person. Most of us at one point in life, we need to get to a place where we look at the mirror and tell ourselves what is wrong with us. Because most of the people know where the problem is. Most of the people understand that this is where my problem is. This is where I have my faults. This is where my issues are. But we never take that opportunity to sit down and remind ourselves that this is where the problem is and this is where I want to get. And again, most of us don't know where we need to get to. And therefore, it becomes a bit of a problem for you to uh, even gauge the progress, gauge if you're going in the right direction or not, or or if you're moving the right way or not. So today I want us to talk about something uh, that is very profound, uh, accepting uh, mistakes, accepting mistakes and uh, causing change. That is what I want us to talk about today because we are talking about tough love, a place where uh, the marriage is, is going through issues, the marriage is not going through uh, the, the bliss that is supposed to be there, but you want to change. You want to make it the perfect marriage the beautiful marriage that you have always dreamt about. So uh, uh, as I've said, it is important that some of us take that opportunity to look ourselves in the mirror and tell yourself the truth. Don't flatter yourself. That They, they always say that the, the one person that you can never lie to is yourself. You can lie to everyone else. You can tell them who you are. And even if you're not, you can tell them what you do. I, I saw someone uh, doing uh, a clip on on social media and they were saying how they have a morning routine and their spouses were there looking at them in a manner likely to suggest that it is not true. So we can lie to everyone else, but we cannot lie to ourselves. We cannot uh, get to a place where sisi wenyewe hatu jiambi ukweli. So it is very important that we take that opportunity. It is it is an essential part of, of the marital change process. It is, it is the most important part that you identify your faults in the relationship and you work to correct them. Uh, most of the times, it is it is very difficult to take it from someone else telling you, you don't do, you don't do, you do. Uh, it, it is very difficult to take it from someone else because, again, it is, it is you being told of what you're not doing. And most of us don't want to hear it. But when it comes to you analyzing yourself and telling yourself, this is what I'm supposed to be doing. This is what I am expected to do for my wife, for my husband. And, and I am I have not been doing it. Once you get to that place where you are you are actually the one pressing the autocorrect button, it is it is good and it is very, very important. First, it is important to agree and accept that it was my fault or it is not my fault. 
it, you see, it is two way that there are times that you will sit and tell yourself, actually, I think I was the problem. I think this is where I, I am. Most of the people like the statement, it is not my fault. Uh, I have been doing everything. And, and you listen to couples when they are, when they are talking, especially when we are having um, uh, counseling services and, and counseling sessions. And you listen to someone and they're saying, uh, you know, mimi ya nimefanya kila kitu nye ninafaa kufanya, yeye hafani, yeye hanifani, hanipeleki out, hanifani nini, hanipiki, hafani nini. And, and, and sometimes you get to that place where it is all about it is not my fault it is their fault the crushing of our marriage is not my fault it is their it is my spouse's fault the downfall that we are having is not my fault it is my spouse's fault and most of the times we all get to that place where we want to give an excuse that it is not about me it is about him we always want to say she did it he did it he didn't do it it was her fault i didn't do anything it was not about me i i only did what i did because he did what he did mimi nilifanya hivyo kwa sababu yeye alifanya hivyo i sat with a couple and we were having that discussion and and at one point uh we asked the lady so why don't you cook for your husband why don't you prepare a meal for him and she said sasa mimi kama hanifanyi kama haniletei maua nampikia kwa nini and you see it is all because there is that bitterness and anger that is inside of her that she does not feel obliged she does not feel as if she has a responsibility to take care of this man because again he is not doing his responsibility but when we get into marriage the bible says that it is for better or for worse it is for good times and for bad times that uh, this is an agreement we had with my wife that any time we are not in good terms there are things that we will not stop doing because those things that we have been doing are very important to both of us so we cannot keep saying that it is my fault it is her fault it is not my fault it is not about me it is all about him we cannot step at that we cannot continue to to do that we have to get to a place where we accept that i have a problem i have been doing this i have not been doing this and i cannot continue in this because i want to see change in our marriage the other people there is another group of people that say some things never change they never change the sad reality is that adults in marriage are not different from kids who are locked in a conflict that is a sad reality that sometimes we we behave like kids who are locked in a conflict and we don't want to solve that conflict because we 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 are seated there and we are saying is it it was to badilika nimezisema kutoka year one of marriage now we are at year 15 and they never change so you give up and you say iki tu yahita wai badilika but i came to 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 realize that most of us it is not uh um it is not your 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 way of doing things that is wrong it is your way of viewing things that is wrong sometimes you 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 have to continually do something for you to get the re- the results of that thing most of us give up at the last minute and at the place where the results were just about to to do it is everyone's first reaction is to blame everybody's first reaction is to blame and most of us have created a defense mechanism that you are sure you are going to be uh, you're going to be pointed at you know that she will come and say it is your fault and therefore any time you're told we need to talk The first thing that comes to your mind is uh, I have to build a, a defense mechanism I have to know what what has she done what that she was not supposed to do what has, did she not do that she was supposed to do so we 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 are there like fault finders and we are there looking for faults in our spouses and looking for faults in our in the people that we love so that we we pull we pull that card of you didn't do so i can't do and most of the times because of that many many marriages have gone through issues have gone through problems some have, have even ended in divorce and separation and because of that uh we we would not be 
in a good position uh looking at ourselves just saying you see it is it is me it is his it is his life so whatever he wants to do uh, let him do it i i can't change him things will never change you know he's he always says uh, that this is him this is how he has been brought up you see every time you pull up that card of this is how i am this is how i have been i cannot change then you limit the opportunities that you have to experience a good marriage you limit uh, the opportunities that you have to experience the bliss that is supposed to be in your marriage it is not right it is not godly but it is human nature to tend to um blame someone else it is not right we agree that it is it cannot be that every other time it is your spouse that is wrong I agree there are times that they are wrong but there are times that ourselves we can look and say yes they are wrong but their 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 actions are a repercussion of my actions so I first have to agree that I did something wrong and and because I did something wrong I need to 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 change my perception, change my uh, how I perceive things, uh, change how I look at things, and it is going to be very important. It is human nature, and that human nature needs to be worked on. It is not something that is is permanently engraved in someone. It is something that you make a decision to do. That I will not look at the faults of my spouse. I will not look at what they did not do and what they did. I will also look uh, inside of me. I will go to the mirror, be real with myself and say actually this thing can actually change and it can change if i decide to change myself so uh um there there are those questions that uh we need to ask ourselves and we need to be real with ourselves that you you sit down with your spouse and you tell your spouse actually i have realized i am a problem i i i have a problem with this thing i have a problem with uh denying every time i i am wrong i have seen couples who say uh sometimes you are using your phone and because you know it will irritate your spouse you are using your phone and the moment they appear you put it down and And, and you are acting like a small child you are acting like a small child because you don't want them to get mad because you know the repercussions of them getting mad but you are sure that it is not about them getting mad it is about what you are not doing or what you are doing over the 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 many days that we have had or the many sessions that we have had each spouse blames the other for their marriage problems looking at the many i have had sessions that i have sat with people for counseling and people come and sit down on a counseling desk and all they say is hakufanya alinifanyia alifanya vibaya alifanya hivi siku anataka afanye hivyo na ndio alifanya i have always told him not to do that i have always told her not to do it uh, uh, he always he knows that he is not supposed to place his socks there but he is always placing his socks there he she knows that she is not supposed to cook food with a lot of salt but she is always cooking food with a lot of salt and and we are, are there for about 30 minutes one hour just blaming one another and that negative energy gets to the other person and sometimes even our our quarrels our fights they are fights that are not healthy because everyone is guarding their territory everyone is looking at why are you blaming me while you have a problem i want to remove that peck that is in your eye but i have a whole log in my eye and therefore it becomes a bit of a problem some of the complaints uh, and i know you have heard this severally some of the complaints that we have is he never talks he does not talk to me he does not explain to me what is happening he does not tell me what is going on she never stops talking <laughs> you see it's a, it's a conflict of ideas that uh, the man is 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 not talking he is silent every time there is a conflict he resolves to go back to his cocoon and just think about it and he thinks about it for the next 30 days and he does not give a solution and then the woman does not keep quiet she continues speaking and and this is a good place to say men process their issues in silence but women process as they are talking so it is it is good to understand that this is where we are this is the person that i got married to her processing is she is processing yes as she is talking and she is expecting me to process as she is processing which i cannot do and she, and i am expecting her to process as i am processing and it cannot happen so we need to find a and strike a balance a balance where we agree actually this is what is happening um 
then then uh, another good complaint that comes is that he works too many hours you are always there working you're always out working and there's always an excuse for that there's always uh, a way that you will say it because you know you uh, we will we will not have uh, love for dinner there's no day that we can serve uh, we can we can have uh, love as our roof which is very true but the complaint is He's working too hard. But this is one thing that I realized. A man told me uh, that during COVID, when there was curfew, uh, he used to go to the he used to get to the compound at around eight when the curfew begins. But he used to enter the house at around midnight or 2 a.m. so that he gets everyone asleep because he was he had a nagging wife. And this is what the Bible says: it is better to stay on the rooftop than stay in a house with a nagging wife and this again brings us to a place where we we get to think might it be that when david saw bathsheba he was at the uh as, at the rooftop because the wife was nagging that is something that you need to ponder as even we are we are discussing this so another thing is she does not keep the house clean you see because of gender roles that we have placed, that we have uh, set uh, even in our families and in our cultures, it is a responsibility, it is a responsibility of the wife to make sure that the house is kept warm, cozy and clean. So that is something that people complain about. And, and you will hear husbands say, you know, I, 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 I always do not want to come back home because she's always dirty. She's always taking care of uh, the children and she does not take care of herself, which again, I agree and understand that taking care of a child, the children is a whole work, a whole uh, responsibility altogether. And someone said, if, uh, if, if your husband feels as if you're not doing anything you're not doing enough by taking care of the children just leave him with the children for one day and he will always respect you because of what he will see that particular day so that is something that people complain about another thing is that uh, she won't have sex with me uh, ladies have have i have a headache uh, there are times that you just don't feel as if you want to have sex with your husband and it becomes a, a place where you you uh, he feels neglected he feels that he has been set aside he feels that he's not being taken care of and most of the times that complaint raises so many other complaints Remember, this is the only way and the only time that we are able to become one. The Bible says that when, whenever a person has a relation, sexual relations with another person, they become one. This is the only time that we become one. So our thinking, our, our ideologies, that uh, that is the time that they are placed together. They, they become a bonding place. And therefore, if it does not happen as often as his should, uh, I, you, that becomes a complex that would draw someone away and you see this is a peck in the lady's eye and it is a log in the man's eye or is a log in the lady's eye and a peck in the the man's eye and it becomes something that can actually cause a lot of friction and a lot of chaos um then another one that is slightly related to that is that she's too focused on the children children are disruptors they come to disrupt the life of people. And one thing that we need to understand is that children, like any other visitor, are also visitors. Some of them visit for 18 years. Some of them visit for 15 years. Some of them visit for 25 years. But one thing that we need to agree is that they are visitors. And you see, there is no day that visitors have ever come to my house and it disrupts my schedule. It disrupts what I'm supposed to do. The problem is most of the times, uh, we we just need to take care of these children. I, I listened to a friend of mine, a good friend of mine who told me, you know, I, I found the solution to making sure that my children do not disrupt our marriage. And this is what he said. I bought a seat and put the seat in the bedroom. You can try this at home. And put the seat in the bedroom. And he called all his children. He had four children. He called them. They were still very young. So he called them and, and sat with them in the sitting room. And he explained to them 
anything that happens past eight, it is mom and dad's time. Anything that happens past 8 p.m., it is mom and dad's time. So 8 p.m. is your time to go and sleep, time to go and do your things out there. Those that are grown ups that you, you leave us, let us be. And he used to take that time to sit with the wife and have a discussion. And he said that is what built uh his relationship with his wife because they used to take time and just sit and talk, sit and have a conversation, sit and, and discuss what, what needs to happen in their marriage. At that particular time, between 8 and 10 p.m., it was not time to have sex. It was not time to talk about the children. It was not time to talk about the household uh, items that are not there. It was not time to talk about the budget. It was time to talk about themselves their marriage and they were able to build a lot of intimacy within themselves that they are they they moved right now they have been married for about 35 years and they still do the same thing now they are empty nesters they the the children are gone and they are only the two of them in the house but every time they sit down and have a conversation so how was your day so how did you see it so is there anyone that made you mad is there anyone that made you happy is it is there anything that you would want to share with me before they even start talking about everything else, they know where they are. They keep tabs with one another, which is very important. And one of the last ones that I would want to talk about today that many women, even in the office, say is he's not romantic. Romantic is relative. There are people who romantic means you come with flowers and a bar of chocolate and you give it to me. Someone said something that was very powerful. And, and I will say it here and don't use it against anyone in any court of law. He say, she said that the most romantic thing that her husband has ever done is wash utensils. That she is turned on anytime he's doing household chores. Anytime he decides, I am going to wash the house, she feels, wow, now this is the man that I married. And you see, the people are, are wired differently. People are different in their own ways. So you, you might decide to go and wash utensils thinking that your wife uh, will see you as the most sexy man in the world. But again, you will find yourself at a place where she does not even understand. So one of the most important things is you understand what does romantic mean to your spouse. So once you understand what romantic means to your spouse, then you're able to satisfy that need for them because it is very important. So let us stop looking at our spouse's faults. Uh, they, they are probably correct. Maybe the, the faults are there, but it does not do any good to focus on them. What you need to do is focus on me. What am I not doing? What am I doing wrong? Then if I am able to change me, uh, someone said that if you break an egg from the outside, life ends. If you break it from the inside, life begins. So if I start the change from the inside of me, then I will be able to bring life to the marriage. But if I try and, and break the egg from the outside and try to tell my wife, this is what you're not doing. This is These are your faults. Make sure you change this. Make sure you become this and, and all that. It becomes a, a bit of a problem because we are not able to change ourselves. I want us to, to take an opportunity, even, even tonight or even tomorrow, take an opportunity and just walk to yourself to the mirror. Look at yourself in the mirror and be real with you. Is it something that you need to change? Is it something that is embedded in you because of things that you have gone through? Is it something that uh, you have grown up knowing and it is a notion that is disturbing you? Is it something that you need to change? Is it something that you need help? Find someone that you can talk to. Find people that you can tell, by the way, I am struggling with this thing and I need to change it. I am struggling with this other thing and I need to change it. And the moment you speak out to somebody, speak out to somebody who can help you. Don't speak out to somebody who will go and tell another person, you know, I have a prayer item. Let us pray for so and so because they are struggling with this and that. And, and it becomes a bit of a problem. Focusing on your partner's faults keeps your marriage stuck and in trouble 
and joyless and funless. If you focus on their problems, be sure you will continue seeing them. Be sure they will always be there. So d- focusing on them makes your marriage stuck. I-, I have seen very many people who have been mark timing at the same place for quite a long time in their marriage. And it is only because they have not gotten to the resolve of deciding I will not focus on their faults. I will focus on what I'm not doing right. Sometimes it is a ripple effect. There are people who say, you you know, the Bible says uh, men should love their wives so that lo- wives can submit. And then men, there are men who say it is the wife that submits so that it makes love easy. What if you sit down and tell yourself, I am a man. I will not wait for my wife to submit for me to love her. I will have her regardless. I will give her everything regardless of whether she submits or not. That will help you a lot to to remove some of the problems and some of the challenges that we have in our generation. I know that we have learned we have learned something. It is important that we take off the log that is in our eyes so that we can also see clearly the log that is in, in, in our spouse's eyes. Let us not put emphasis and focus on some of the things that they are doing wrong. Let us also take time and look at what we are doing wrong, what we are doing correctly, whatever you're doing correctly, applaud yourself. Tell yourself you're doing right, you're doing good. Don't focus on the wrong things only. As you stand on that mirror, stand on that mirror and tell yourself, by the way, you bought her flowers, perfect. You're doing a good job. You you gave her uh, a gift, good. You're doing a good job. Uh, You gave him, you prepared a nice meal, a five-course meal for him, Perfect. You're good, doing a good job. And by the time you're living there, then you have already taken the ticks of what you're doing correctly. And you can strengthen on those points. And then you have realized what you're not doing correctly. And you can edit and change some of those things. This is the only way that we are going to build marriages that are strong. My name is Kanjagwa. This is Tough Love on Marriage and Bliss. And I believe that as we continue, we will continue learning with one another, continue making each other a great as great as we have been created to become. Let me just pray for you and pray with you. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you. Thank you because you have taught us, oh God, that we should not remove the peck that we see in our spouse's eyes without removing the log that is in our eyes. I pray that, Father, whatever we are learning, teach us, oh God, to look at where we are faulting, where we are not doing the correct thing. Teach us, oh God, to be humble enough to remove the log that is in our eyes and become real with ourselves and become a solution to our families. I pray that, Father, may you hold our hands, things that we have a weakness in. I pray that, Lord, may you teach us to become better beings, better people, better spouses, better partners. I pray the Lord help us to become better parents, O oh Father. Whatever you have set for us, the assignment you have set for us in our marriages, I pray the Lord may you help us to become articulate and cause them to come to fruition. Whatever you have entrusted us with, I pray that Father may you help us to become real with ourselves and with our spouses and with communities around us so that people can learn through us. We we know that we are a Bible that people will read. I thank you, Lord, and I honor you. And it is in Jesus' name that we do pray and believe. If you need someone to talk to, if you need someone to reach out to, the numbers that are there, please just reach out to us, talk to us, comment, uh, like, share with everyone that you know. Make sure that this word has gone out. We have to correct matters, marriage, and relationships. The, we cannot stay and, uh, and and just look at things going wrong. We have to become a solution because God has called us to become the light to the world and the salt of the earth. I believe that you have learned. I believe that you have been blessed. See you next week, same time, same place. This is Tough Love on Marriage and Bliss. And we, as you always say, no retreat, no surrender. Baraka.